already now. Thank you very, very much. On behalf of the Puppet Company, I'd like to welcome all of you to beautiful Glen Echo Park, the Puppet Company Playhouse, and our production of the Free Billy Goats Rock. In this country, as opposed to other countries, most puppeteers aren't simply puppeteers. That is, they don't just operate puppets, but rather they will create their own theater, as Christopher and Mayfield and I have done, in which you have an opportunity to write, to perform, to build, to design, to compose, to do all of those things. It's the bringing together of all your abilities into a single kind of melting pot and be, being able to experience and to share all of your, excuse me, many talents uh, in that fashion. I started puppetry because my parents were puppeteers. I just followed in naturally with uh, uh, helping out with little chores for my dad and mom while they were making the puppets. My first appearance on stage was when I was five years old and the leg fell off of one of the marionettes they were using during a performance and I kindly crawled out on stage and retrieved the leg for them in the middle of the show. When you engage your imagination, anything can happen. And we think in puppetry especially, but any theater, you're engaging your audience to take their imagination further. And if you do it properly, they believe. This is the third iteration of the, uh, the Puppet Company Playhouse. Uh, we actually started out performing in the Spanish Ballroom in Glen Echo Park. Uh, we would set up the show, uh, do three shows, take down the show and store it so they could have dances in the ballroom and then set up again the next morning and, and start all over again. For years we petitioned the National Park Service to allow us to have a space here in Glen Echo and, and to show what we could do with a permanent theater. We helped design the theater and although we had to apply to perform in it, it was designed from the ground up for puppets. The performance is the biggest part of our company and they change from our own styles of puppetry whether it be rod puppets, short or long string marionettes, actors involved, hand puppets. We'll also bring into that once or twice a year a guest troupe who has a very different style than ours and different stories than we're presenting to broaden our regular guests um, horizon if you will. There was not a single moment. From the time I was very small, probably about age five, I developed an interest in puppetry and tried to pursue making simple little puppet, puppet figures. But I think probably the moment in which I said to myself and to other people, this is going to be it, was in an eighth grade math class. And our teacher did, as teachers often do, is said, what do you guys want to be when you grow up? And we went around the room and everybody was really thinking about it because we were in the eighth grade. You know, by all means, we had to, to figure what careers we were going to have in the next, in, in the foreseen future. And so people talked about being, you know, doctors, lawyers, and Indian chiefs and all the usual things. When she came to me, she, I said, well, you know, I've thought about being a teacher. I've thought about archaeology. I've thought about an awful lot of things, but I always go back to puppetry. I have a feeling I'm going to be a puppeteer. The class broke up. You know, wild laughter. I just wonder where they are now. You know, <laughs> because it happened. Here I am. I am a puppeteer. Please. 